I started smoking when I was 15 years old, so I've been smoking 21 years now. I believe I started at age 22 out of peer pressure when my brother set me up with a girl to go out with. Well, I'm 27 now, and I've smoked on and off since I was 12 years old. Did it mostly when I was younger because I thought it was cool. I started smoking at the age of 12, and I smoked continually for at least 20 years. I thought it was a cool thing to do. I was hanging out with some older girls and wanted to be kind of the, the cool girl. Well, I started smoking on and off since I was a teenager, a young teenager, 15 years old. I started smoking because my girlfriends all smoked and it, I was the only one that didn't smoke. When I started going to AA, um, Alcoholics Anonymous, I quit drinking and um, I started smoking. My first cigarette was probably when I was four years old. I started inhaling when I was still in grade school. And uh, I, was, I, I was up to a pack a day by the time I was 17. I'll be 50 this year. And uh, it took me like three years to quit. I moved to New Orleans. Um, I went to college. I have a degree in finance. Um, lost everything in Hurricane Katrina. Uh, moved back home. Started my life over. And um, just, I got addicted to pain pills. And then later moved into smoking heroin and meth. Uh, I do have a mental illness. I'm uh, depressed and I have anxiety. I'm bipolar, schizoaffective. I'm 38. Um, I'm a mother of four. Uh, I've been doing drugs for 22 years. Schizophrenia, I'm schizophrenic, bipolar, um, paranoid, um, agoraphobia. When I first came to Lakeview, I, I was like I was in a box, and they kept throwing dirt over the top of me, and all I had was a tiny little light to see at the dark end of the tunnel. I am 36 years old. I was born in Seattle, and I've been in Salt Lake City for quite a few years, and I've been a drug addict for the last 10 years. My DOC is meth or anything I can smoke. I was diagnosed with a learning disability and hypertension when I was 13. Now I'm diagnosed with bipolar and schizoaffective. Uh, I hear voices. Uh, once you smoke a cigarette, you smoke a cigarette and it just kind of calms things down. And, and that, was, that was one of the real, real sticklers to try and, trying to quit smoking. As we began the project, we had, we established two cardinal rules. That no one who, who was part of the substance abuse and mental health treatment would be denied services. Number two was that we would provide services to help people quit. So it was about getting resources to people. It's impacted me a lot because I believe that it led me into my addiction. Um, and I'm all or nothing when it comes to cigarettes, drugs, alcohol. I uh, was forced to, sm to quit when I got arrested. And um, when I put my jail clothes back on to be transferred to the House of Hope, I realized that I stunk. You know, your hands stink, your hair s smells, your clothing. I don't want to smell bad anymore. <laughs> and all my clothes stunk like really bad, and I do not like that. Now the smell of smoke like just makes me, it just makes me sick, I don't even wanna, I don't wanna smell it, but I can't believe that I was like, you know, used to sit in smoke shacks and I would, you know, the smoke would be all around me and now I'm like, no way, I don't wanna smell like that. <laughs> I didn't want my kids smelling like it anymore. I mean, my teeth, my health, I mean, that's, the bigger reasons of why I wanted to quit. Um, smoking <clears throat> was probably one of the first drugs that I ever started. 
Um, it started with cigarettes and then led into drinking. Um, it definitely impact, impacted my finances. Um, Smoking is extremely expensive. The cost of cigarettes was just way too expensive. And I, I've saved like $100 a month or more for not smoking. While smoking is really expensive, really expensive, especially $7 a pack, I was probably spending about 50 bucks a week smoking. The cost of smoking the cigarettes, the kind that I was buying was $7.25 a pack, so it was a great deal of money. And I was at my worst point, I can remember going into my dad's room and I was taking his quarters out of the change jar because I couldn't support it myself. I just knew that I had to stop. What's, what's happening is my peers who um, struggle with a mental illness uh, as well as addictions are, dr are dying on average 25 years earlier than the rest of the population. And I believe smoking has a huge part in that. In 2006, NASHPA, the National Association of State Mental Health Program Directors, issued a report where it was clear that people with major mental illness were dying up to 25 years younger than other people. So just by virtue of the fact, if an individual had a mental illness, they're only gonna live two thirds as long as people that don't have a mental illness. Uh, and in Utah, our statistics were even higher. I smoked for so many years that it, it has gave, I've got uh, emphysema now. And I, I have to have an inhaler, and uh, and uh, th and I'm going through problems right now because of it. I'm dealing I'm dealing with the after effects. Uh, I uh, wish I never did because it really affects my health. Um, as soon as I quit cold turkey. Um, a week later, I was in the hospital for three months in a coma. And they said that affected me. And I lost part of my left lung because of it. It bothered my asthma so bad. And um, it cost a lot of money, for one thing. It um, affected my sleeping. My doctor told me if I didn't quit, I was going to end up with black lungs. <laughs> and as the years went by, I quit three different times for three years. And I'm an alcoholic, and when I'd start drinking again, smoking and drinking go together. And um, I, I've quit drinking now for 27 years. And I've quit smoking now for four years and five months. I just don't want to go back out and relapse on smoking because that is also an addictive behavior of mine to where it could lead to me relapsing on oxycodone, which was my drug of choice. I believe like if I never picked up that first cigarette, I would have never started smoking. And the smoking the cigarettes has been much harder to quit than quitting using, uh, abusing substances it, by a long shot. It's been way more addictive and much more of a uh, sense of my life. When I would do drugs, I mean, I would always smoke and vice versa. Um, or when I'm partying, always wanted a cigarette to go along with it or when I'm bored. Um, but that always just leads me into not only wanting to smoke cigarettes, but to smoke meth also. Um, which not, not smoking now is really helping me get a lot further in my recovery. We were taking a look at across the state and we realized that while only about 9% of uh, Utah citizens smoked, 68% of those admitted to substance abuse treatment and between 65 and 85% of individuals that were uh, receiving mental health treatment were already were smoking. So we realized that the smoking percentage for our population was way above the state norm. 
We also took a look at the fact that tobacco kills more individuals than all of the other substances combined, and we said it was time that we stopped ignoring the elephant in the room and started addressing with this, with this very serious health problem. I don't like the thought of addiction at all. Um, and I do believe that once we've triggered the addiction part of our brain, um, that it clicks on and you're always going to do it. I, uh, I had a drug, drug history, really strong drugs, and cigarette smoking is the hardest thing to quit because they're available. I've done heroin, I've done crystal meth, I've done marijuana, acid, uh, cocaine, but uh, cigarettes, it's just, you just gotta have them one after another. The things that prevent, prevented me from quitting was that it's so accessible outside of treatment. Um, it was allowed in detox. It was allowed at every corner market. Uh, you walk down the street and you're triggered because ev a lot of people smoke and you're always smelling it and you're always seeing it. And it's even in the movies. It's everywhere. The hardest things about quitting smoking is just having the sensation that I had to do something and the cigarette was the only cure. I was in my addiction at full force. Um, I was overwhelmed a lot of the time. Um, with my addiction, it was more of a relaxing drug. So that's what I did was um, just, I would get bored and smoke. I noticed when I got stressed is when I'd smoke the most. Just like with my addiction, I think that was the reason why I started using. So the more sh you know stress I felt, the more I wanted to smoke. It was just such a familiar part of my day. Uh, I'd get in my car, I'd smoke a cigarette. Um, after I'd eat, I'd smoke a cigarette. When I was really stressed, I'd smoke a cigarette. Smoking was a huge addiction for me. Um, it was a coping skill. It was, you know, something that I had incorporated so much into my daily life. I got up, I had a cigarette. I ate breakfast, I had a cigarette. I had a cup of coffee, I ate a cigarette. I had sex, I, you know, had a cigarette. It was so habitually in my everyday program that, um, I didn't even, when people would say, oh, you should quit smoking, it was like, I don't want to quit, you know? Um, I enjoyed it. When I was able to step away and see the damage that I was doing, the way that I smelled, the way that I was perceived by the world, that's when I realized that maybe I need to take a second look at, at quitting smoking. Um, you know, I always thought I'd, get, I'd give myself a date to stop quitting, and that date just kept getting pushed out and pushed out. I mean, it was... I always told myself I could I could do it, but um, realistically, I just kept putting it out in something dramatic enough, you know, actually ha being pregnant or coming into treatment had to happen in order for me to get a grip because really, I don't think, I really don't think I could have quit on my own. A statistic that I think has impacted many of us is that most people with behavioral health issues report, in fact, upwards of 70 to 80 percent of people report they want to quit smoking. I used smoking as a coping mechanism when I was stressed out, when I was angry, when life was hard, or when I was using drugs or watching a movie. There was just so many triggers. I was just always smoking. And when I came into treatment, I was able to figure out that it's my coping mechanism. It's my time out from the world. And instead, I could chew a piece of gum after I ate, or I could chew a piece of gum after I had a disagreement, or I had anxiety. And it was just that few minute time frame when I have the onset of the trigger that I needed to cope. So a stick of gum or just talking about it was, a uh, better coping mechanism than having a cigarette. I wanted to come into the program. I knew ahead of time that it was non-smoking. Um, this has been a goal of mine for several years. It's just me coming into the program kind of pushed it and motivated me even more, um, and I was just ready. If I wasn't coming into a treatment facility to um, learn about my addictive behaviors, I probably would have never quit smoking. 
It seemed impossible. I started getting a cough that uh, all the other smokers had that were, I, were my friends. And um, with the help from the staff members at Lakeview and the classes they had, helped me immensely. I, I love this place because it gives me something to do. Because when you're smoking, you're always smoking. And if you're doing something, you're not thinking about smoking. You're, you're, this place is like, like a safe haven for me that, because I always kept myself really busy when I was trying to stop smoking. It was either eating candy or just doing work and coming here and working and, uh, and the staff encouraging me. And I knew that once the craving had passed, it would pass and then I would be okay. So if I could just make it through the initial, you know, maybe drink a bottle of water or eat an apple, something like that, you know, anything healthy to the alternative of lighting a cigarette. I was put on Wellbutrin, not to stop smoking, but as a, to help with depression. And I really think that kind of helped me. I didn't know that they, I had used that for uh, smoking, you know, for people to quit smoking. If I have to have a cigarette or something, I'll go and exercise to take that craving away. Because when you're exercising, you're not really thinking about, oh, I gotta have this smoke, oh, I gotta have another smoke. You're not thinking about that. You're thinking about getting the program done. My peers help me the most, because a lot of us girls came into treatment smoking. So whenever we'd get antsy, we'd kind of take a minute, breathe, get some hard candy, and we'd be good to go. When I'm approaching, like, when I want a cigarette really bad, I just focus on doing either exercise. And most of the cravings happen at night between, like, 6 to 9 o'clock. I'm, I'm still craving cigarettes. But I'm working through it, and I haven't fallen to temptation because I know that's going to lead me down a bad road. So in the past, um, I, well, I was smoking. Um, as soon as I found out I was pregnant, I was able to cold turkey everything, cigarettes and, and my, the drugs that I chose to do. Um, I, it, made, it made it a lot easier. I don't know how I was able to turn it on and off for that, but any other time it, I've not been able to turn it off. In order to quit when I got here, um, I had called the quit line. I got gum and they've also let me go to the store and buy other gum and Jolly Ranchers and stuff to help me so that, just to keep me busy and I color a lot in group just so that I have something to keep my hands busy so I'm not wanting to, so I'm not thinking about it as much but it's gotten a lot easier over time and knowing that nobody else around here is smoking so it's been really beneficial just because I think that if we were able to keep smoking here or if the day treatment people we're able to keep smoking like around us. I, I think it's a huge trigger to us to to want to smoke. Um, I did call the quit line. Um, I got the lozenges the first month and then the gum the second month and that definitely helped me kind of taper off the nicotine. Um, and then it was just being around people that didn't smoke, like being in a treatment facility where there wasn't smoking, that helped a lot too. The treatments just helped me to really be mindful of my thoughts and be more mindful of my choices. So my life, you know, you still deal with life the same. I mean, life happens every day. Um, it's just really making a conscious decision if it's worth it to be impulsive and pick up a cigarette or use drugs um, to deal with things. You know, you still have thoughts all the time where you want to smoke or use drugs. Um, but instead, it's just you kind of your consequential thinking kicks in or, you know, what's this going to lead to? And you kind of play the tape through your head and you just it doesn't really look like a very good outcome in the end. It's helped me stay tobacco free, um, being in a treatment facility, for sure. Um, knowing that, knowing that if I do start smoking again, it's going to take me right back into my meth addiction, and that scares the heck out of me. You know, um, I know that I've got, I've got my kids getting ready to come in the program, and um, they know my old behaviors. And as soon as that old behavior comes on, it's going to send them for a loop, and that'll send me for a loop, and. I really don't want to, I don't want to go backwards. I don't want to go backwards. 
quitting cigarettes at the same time as coming into recovery. Um, I know that they are trying to ban that in other places also, but I think that I think I think that it should be a no smoking facility because I mean the two go together. Um, maybe some people say it doesn't, but I really you know there's statistics that say that it does. It's a gateway drug. That cigarettes is a gateway drug it back into drug use, and and I believe that 100. percent So um, I think it was a great attribute to be able to stop smoking while I was going through treatment and not being able to smoke while I was in treatment because it was I was able to incorporate the same principles that I was using to stop using uh, drugs or drinking. I use those same principles and techniques and tools in not smoking. So it, it was just a combination effect. If I was going to do it all, I was going to I was going to do it all. If I was going to quit, I was going to quit everything. my life now that I'm not smoking um, I don't stink <laughs> like cigarettes um, it's not staining my teeth anymore um, my kids don't smell like smoke um, I'm not using drugs because I'm not smoking I you know and I really think it's the two go together um, along with alcohol also um, so my life's a lot different and I can exercise without being winded um, yeah, things are going a lot better. I mean, it's really, it's a whole change of not just stop smoking, but it really changes your whole your whole life, it really does. Well, quitting smoking was a major goal of mine for many years. Um, now that I have quit, I feel healthier. Um, my self-esteem had, has been boosted. I know that I no longer stink of cigarette smoke. Um, my teeth are getting whiter, and I just want to be healthy. My life is so much better without tobacco. So much more wonderful. I mean, you notice you notice things more. The taste of food, uh, breathing well. You, things you take for granted when you're smoking, you know. And uh, the air is just crisp and wonderful. The doctor said if I quit smoking, here I go back to smoking. But um, if I quit smoking, my meds would work 30% better. And uh, I did that, and my meds started working, and I just, I feel like I'm on top of the world. I've got, I'm so much better. My family said I'm the best I've been in t 25 years. Without smoking, I, it, it's, it's great because I am, my mind is not consumed with when is my next cigarette. And I don't have to, you know, when I'm doing work or whatever, I don't have that in the back of my mind. Like, I need to go out and smoke. I need to go out and smoke. So my life is a lot better now. I'm not in a cloud like I was when I was smoking. And I find that my health is still improving because I'm still quit smoking. So that's just a couple other things. One thing that is definitely imprinted on me is there's all kinds of extra time to do stuff when you're not smoking. So you just apply it correctly and live by that. Yes, I do have less anxiety um, since I've quit smoking. Um, I feel like since I've quit smoking um, and I haven't gone back to it, it's kept me away from a lot of unhealthy people. I feel like when you're around people that smoke, you're going to be around other unhealthy things and it can just lead you back into that. It is a sense of empowerment that I don't choose today to pick up a cigarette to deal with life. I choose other healthy things instead. To me, it's a lifestyle change. Um, I want to be perceived different by the world. I want people to be like, wow, that's a beautiful woman, and then have me light up a cigarette and have them go, oh. You know, I don't want that perception of me changed. I want people to see me for who I really am. And I want to also open up a whole new avenue of the type of people that I'm going to be hanging out with. I realized that if I was to start smoking again, that it's just going to be that door open a little bit more in order for me to go out and possibly get involved with the same, with a different group that's maybe they smoke, but then they also drink or they also do drugs. So for me to not smoke is kind of closing the door on a whole type of society or a part of society that I don't want to be a part of right now. I want to be perceived differently. 
I think it's really healthy for my kids too because I noticed when I smoked around them, they had breathing problems because we'd be driving in the car and I'd be lighting a cigarette smoking with them. You know, and now that I don't smoke, I can tell how strong the odor is, especially when I'm around kids that their parents smoke. So I think it's really just unattractive, especially for little children to smell like that. I think smoking is a really negative coping method. So I feel a little bit more confident that I, there's other things that I could do besides smoke to bring my stress down. I feel healthy is the most. I feel really healthy. I smell good. <laughs> I love it. I think it was the hardest thing um, in my life to conquer. And um, knowing that nothing has a hold on me, not even a cigarette, is just absolutely amazing. It's such a free feeling and a weight lifted off of my shoulders that I don't have to figure out every day where I'm gonna get five, six, seven bucks for a pack of cigarettes. That's what's important to us, is that we're improving the quality and the quantity of life for people with mental health and substance abuse issues. Some advice or some hope that I could give people that are struggling with stopping smoking would be to realize that your whole life changes, like just the way that you think about things and the way your perception on how, what you're capable of doing in life. If you can overcome something such as stopping, you know, doing drugs and, and drinking and to stop smoking, you really, I mean, it's the hardest thing to do in the whole world. If you can stop doing that, just imagine what you're capable of doing. Go for it with a positive attitude and, um, and there are definitely people here, you know, that have overcome a lot of other things in their lives. And so if you bring that up and compare that to, well, look what you've, you know, done so far, and this is just smoking. And if you could overcome what you've overcome, I am I know that you can overcome this too. Some people say it's too hard to quit smoking. I tell them it's a motivational thing that you probably ought to apply within yourself and have several choices to back you up that are going to help you get out of it. Just have the will to try and keep that positive feeling. And um, if you start to slide, just bear with it and for me, I said my serenity prayer many, many times a day. You'll feel a more full life so, so that you're not like in bondage to the cigarette and having to go out and, um, you know, in the snow or whatever and, you know, huddle together and smoke. It's, it's so much more freeing to be free of nicotine and tobacco. Smoking? It's like you're in bondage, and uh, there is a way out. There is. There's many different ways. Most of us smoked before we did drugs um, because it's legal, and I think that um, to kick an addiction that you've had all those years is absolutely freeing. And once you learn to cope with that, you can cope with anything. I feel so motivated and healthy right now um, and empowered. Like, I overcame an addiction as of today, and to be overcome smoking is like an unbelievable feeling. Um, there is hope. You can do it. Just like you can be drug free, it's possible. And just live it day by day. Um, letting go is the biggest part. Um, once you let go of quit trying to control everything, Everything falls into place, and just take it a day at a time, just like you do your recovery. Reach out and ask for support. Ask for help. Try something new. I believe that if you really want to quit smoking, it's possible. You have to want it to be able to do it. Anything's possible. <laughs>